the computer museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Silicon Valley. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick, my co-host this week for two days of live coverage at the OpenStack SV Silicon Valley event here at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View. One exit from our Palo Alto office. Our next guest is Tyler Britton, Technical Marketing Manager, Blue Box. Welcome to theCUBE. Well, thanks for having me. So Blue Box we're big fans of because Jesse wins, won our CUBE Madness, got the <laughs> trophy to prove it. Yep. Um, moreover, you guys have been big in the OpenStack, big part of the ecosystem, big success story out of Seattle, recently acquired by uh, IBM. Mm -hmm. So give us the update, what's going on, and the recent news, soft layer in 90 days. I mean, come on, tell us what happened. That seems I like a long time, could have been 30. Yeah, it was true DevOps. Would have been <laughs> of course, it's uh, <laughs> you know some of those challenges end up not being uh, from the technical angle, right? It's it's getting the right people in the right room together. But I think it's I think it's a real testament to the technical operations staff and engineering staff at Blue Box to be able to uh, you know take what was a, a pretty standard, well built platform in our data centers and be able to deliver them in soft layer. Uh, working with the soft layer teams pretty closely. So I'm just joking. 90 Days is obviously yeah. press releasable. You guys pumping yeah. that up as a success. But I, you know, you know, I'm kind of kidding. But also, yeah. you know, De DevOps is about pushing code daily, right? So <laughs> take us through why the 90 Days was a success. What was part of the reason? What were some of the insights you guys learned? And what was the process? Uh, well, I think what made the process really, uh, really interesting was you know, the acquisition happens, and it's you know the, the just the initial kind of integration work to have Blue Box operate as a uh, you know as as part of the IBM family, but then also uh, starting the process with soft layer, meeting the appropriate people, uh, and getting the teams together, and being able to hammer out not just the technical but the commercial pieces. So, soft layer has these types of servers in their data center. Is that going to be a problem for our tools? Um, they offer their offerings are slightly different than ours. Um, what we deliver as a standard. So. Do we change our standard to match soft layers? And, and working through those types of things, uh, and then and then obviously the, the obvious technical challenges of uh, of deployment. So it was all of those things happening at once at the same time being uh, being part of the usual acquisition integration work was just a lot of balls moving at once. Um, but it was uh, it was pretty pretty exciting to see how quickly it could come together. Yeah, and get that IBM sales team ramped up. That's that's uh, <laughs> that's what everybody wants to get going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's there's been so much interest from uh, from IBM from IBM customers, uh, and then and then just even the uh, community as a whole. You know, you have a successful uh, delivery system like Blue Box bringing private clouds as a service now available. You know, with the with the big IBM brand name uh, behind it, uh, supporting it is really uh, exciting. So was there was there an open was there an IBM OpenStack config that Blue Box replaced or is this another option? Uh, today this is another option. Uh, the IBM team has a number of different OpenStack things they've been working on, and, and kind of that's the process we're at now is uh, rationalization of some of that is, and, and I will I have to say the IBM team's been been a real breath of fresh air as far as really open to say, hey, what, is it, what does Blue Box do? How are they doing it? Are they doing it better than us in some areas? Where can we learn from them? And what can we show them stuff that we've been doing uh, to kind of really collaborate? It's a very collaborative relationship. So I think you're going to see some really great things going forward from that too. Okay, so, so are there some natural ways that that could get segmented out where there's different kind of flavors of OpenStack-based environment coming from um, from IBM for the customer base, and what are some of the differences between the different? Sure, I think I think the main focus is going to be kind of in three areas, right? So the traditional private cloud as a service, what we call dedicated, which Blue Box was delivering in the soft layer or Blue Box data centers. Okay. Uh, Blue Box local, so in the customer's data center as well, still delivering OpenStack as a service, but on customer uh, on their premises. And the third is public cloud, right? So. Uh, IBM is, has not been shy, saying they're not they're not moving out of the public cloud space. So I think there there's going to be the, those are going to be the three main focuses for IBM when it comes to OpenStack, kind of in those buckets. Okay. And then obviously the the Cloud Foundry, Bluemix stuff on top of all of those things. Good portfolio. Let's talk about Blue Box's history right now. Where you guys are, number of employees, 
the IBM transition, what does this all mean for folks out there? And how does, does, it, does it change the OpenStack involvement, product? What are some of the impacts of the IBM acquisition? Sure, so um, I, I actually joined right after the acquisition. So I joined Blue Box. Um, I believe you know, I joined IBM technically as all the Blue Box employees were joining IBM. Uh, so at the time, I think there was 50 or 60 employees uh, Blue Box at the time, and it's and it's continued to grow. So that was the exciting thing, and what got me, uh, you know, willing to join post acquisition was, that Blue Box is, is doing exciting things within IBM, and and you know those opportunities were there for uh, for growth and 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 even more engagement instead of less, where we've seen some of the other uh, OpenStack startups get acquired, and kind of teams get broken up or or they kind of go quietly into a corner. Uh, Blue Box is still in front and center in OpenStack, uh, along with IBM, uh, going forward. So I think that's really exciting. So I think you're just, you're going to see more, even more Blue Box instead of less. Even Blue Box. more Jesse. So what's going on <laughs> here at OpenStack? Share with the folks out there watching. What does OpenStack Silicon Valley mean to you? I think uh, OpenStack Silicon Valley is you know kind of we started to see some of it in Vancouver at the last summit, um, but we're really hearing the message loud and clear here is uh, it's. It's about focusing on the experience, the end user's experience. Uh, operational challenges, absolutely, you know, OpenStack operators, how they're going to do it, you know, OpenStack service providers, but it really boils down to, if we don't care how you do it, it's how the users consume it. If the users don't like it, your, your OpenStack deployment, no matter how operationally sound it is, they're not going to use it. So it's, um, there's been a clear message uh, through all the sessions, uh, the focus on less on the underlying technology and more on how the developers are going to consume and use it, um, both public and private clouds. What do you think about hybrid cloud? When someone says, does hybrid cloud exist, what do you think? Um, I, I feel, I think conceptually hybrid cloud makes a lot of sense. I just don't feel like anyone's really got it figured out in delivering it. A lot of things are either, we're doing the same thing in two different places and calling it hybrid cloud or, we're doing a private cloud and we're allowing a connection to a public cloud, so we're calling it a hybrid, and there's some, but if the user's experience is different, is it really hybrid then, right? So if a user says, oh, I want this thing, oh, that's only available on the private side, or I want that thing, oh, it's only available on the public side, that's, it's not the right user experience. So I, I think it's something that enterprises are interested in. I don't know if someone's really fully delivering that experience. That's something that's really important. Um, to IBM and to Blue Box is to get that experience, right? So having the OpenStack public and private teams work together, the Bluemix local, uh, as well as the, the host of Bluemix teams all working together to give the customer that continuous experience across both public and private to, to actually try and deliver a hybrid experience. So I, I, I think it's still, you know, hasn't been put together yet, but I think a lot of people are trying to figure it out. So what's uh, um, your take on OpenStack's vision? Is it competing with Amazon Web Services is much more of a bigger enterprise opportunity? I, I think that's that's one of the things people are, are having trouble wrapping their minds around is the, the democratic nature of OpenStack. Is there isn't you know this this leadership team, you know, commercial leadership team, you know, looking at market opportunity and, and, and basing it based on that, it's it's kind of a uh, demand driven. So I think it's I th I think the original intent was let's compete with Amazon. Um, and now I think people see it as a project, as a building block to build uh, what you need out of it, right? So for some people that's building private clouds, uh, for people like Rackspace or you know, it's building public clouds. Uh, it's be interesting to see, you know, as things like containers are more integrated, do people use this with Kubernetes instead of Kubernetes? Like, and I think it's one of those things that's hard to predict because there's not a clear, uh, clear straight line to the future that there's all these different people getting involved. And I think it, it almost builds that, that kind of market feedback you want. So if something isn't helping users or isn't interesting to them, they're not working on it anymore. So when that kind of dies off. So I think that's, that's the good news with OpenStack, but obviously when you have a lot of, a lot of cooks, uh, the kitchen can get crowded. So I got to ask you, um, Cube Madness, we had a very big success. Jesse was the winner. What hacking techniques did you guys use to win that? <laughs> I, can't, I can't disclose any proprietary blue box. Given our security was pretty lame, I mean, you run a kitty script on that, I mean, no problem. As before my Well, this time, year so. we might have a security bracket. Might, yeah. have, might make it a security hackathon where each round gets harder and harder to hack. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm only kidding. On all seriousness, that's all about security. So security's a big deal. I brought just some kidding aside with that cube madness. 
what is security um, issues do you guys take into consideration? A lot of work being done at OpenStack, but no one's talking about security. Is that even a conversation now? Uh, certainly for customers, that's a top conversation. What's sure. your take on that? Uh, I think that's one of the, the challenges of reality that OpenStack as a community is, is coming to grips with was the early days, it was easier to just say, oh, well that's your problem, Mr. App user. You'll write your app to do everything over SS. You're going to secure the app layer and then we're just not going to really think about it too much. Hey, security groups is enough. Uh, but I think that's what they're seeing is that is that is not nearly enough, especially for if you want enterprise adoption. So I mean, the the we're starting to see more projects focus like uh, Barbican, which is key management, focusing on some of those things. A lot of the uh, Neutron SDN work that some of the SDN providers with are, are very security centric. Um, I think I think it's it's tough because. It's, there's no roadmap to say like, well, here's what customers did before, so let's just copy that in OpenStack because those things are, are they're not working anymore. Um, I was reading something this morning that uh, I forget who the provider was. They've they've gotten rid of they've gotten rid of antivirus because they said it's too much of a burden and it doesn't actually stop anything anymore. <laughs> they've moved past it uh, to some to some other techniques. So it's like it's it's not as straightforward as well. Let's see what we were doing before and bring that to OpenStack. So I think it's it's. Like most things, it's a it's a murky future, but I, I think there's definitely a lot more attention on it now than any time previously in, in the open side space. What's the core mission right now of Blue Box? The core mission of Blue Box has not changed. It's to deliver private clouds uh, to our customers, both uh, in our locations or theirs, and give them a great user experience. So that way they can focus on working with OpenStack instead of on OpenStack. So OpenStack, in your mind, on the scale of adoption, 10 being fully adopted, where are we in the market, in your opinion? Um, so I think because we start full and we focus too much kind of on the hype cycle, so if there's not as much talk about it, um, it falls behind. I, I think we're, I think we're, I would put us at maybe, you know, like a like a four, a four or five, you know, it's 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 starting to get there. We're starting to see real traction. To me, that's the, the, the kind of negative energy is a is actually a positive result because that means people are actually doing it, trying it and deploying it versus talking about it and seeing demos and I say, that thing looks awesome but we didn't actually try it. Now that customers are running it, they're learning things, they're, we're growing on it, we're making better improvements to the projects. So I think it's, uh, I think it's on the cusp of uh, large scale enterprise adoption. They've stopped asking, what is OpenStack? I don't really understand it. They're trying to figure out how do they want to do OpenStack now? Do they want to work with a provider? Do they want to build it? What do they want to do? Tyler, thanks for coming on theCUBE, uh, sharing your insights. This is uh, Blue Box, Tyler Britton on theCUBE, technical manager at Blue Box. We'll be hearing from Jesse, uh, the founder for shortly. Um, again, we're live here at Silicon Valley at the OpenStack Silicon Valley, OpenStack SV, hashtag OpenStack SV, or hashtag OSSV15. -S -S Join the conversation. We'll be right back with more after this short break.